Manga Wido. My name is Takeru Kawano. I'm an office worker for an electronics manufacturer. I'm divorced, but I got remarried a few months ago. I met my current wife, Risa, at a drinking party through a friend. Risa has worked in customer service at a clothing store for a long time, and unlike me, she's a good talker. We got along well from the first time we met, exchanged contact information at the party, and gradually deepened our relationship by going out together afterwards. She's also divorced with no children, so the marriage went smoothly. To be honest, we decided to get married with the flow. Risa and I get along well, and I was starting to feel the loneliness of being single. So I was excited to get married and start a fun life. However, aren't you spending too much money this week? Oh, it's fine. We should save up for the future. <sighs> Shut up, it's not that much. You're a small man. You just have to make more money in the first place. Don't put it like that. I'm just trying to- Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear a lecture. I'm going to bed. Good night. Hey, come on! Before we got married, she was a cheerful woman who did everything efficiently. But now, she won't even do the chores. She's become a woman who just spends money roughly. Lisa, what happened? That wasn't my only concern. Oh, Takeru, sorry to bother you. Oh, mother-in-law, hi. After Risa and I got married, my mother-in-law started showing up at our house a lot. Hi? I've come all this way. Why don't you at least offer me some tea? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll serve it right away. Oh, by the way, the washing machine isn't working so well. I think it's time to buy a new one. I see. <laughs> Please help again, Takeru. Buy that. Please buy me another one. But this time, a high-performance one would be nice. What? That's a little... Why not? You get the employee discount anyway, right? Besides, we're family. Let's help each other out. Yes, but I don't know about this. That's what it is. Thanks. My mother-in-law has been asking me for appliances like this since the beginning of our marriage. I thought I should help her at first, since we're family. But it continues like this, which makes me think she should be a little bit more considerate. Even though I gently refuse my mother-in-law, who is quite insistent, it becomes a hassle. So I have to fold. Even if I tell Risa... Well, we're family. Help her out. She says, and doesn't take my side. Ugh, marriage is tough after all. Then one day, I was transferred from the head office to the factory. This wasn't a demotion or anything. It was just standard course for career advancement. It seems that the company's policy is that if you aim for higher positions, you should also know about the work site. I was a little surprised because I thought it was still a long way off. But I was excited because I liked trying new things. But Risa, on the other hand... Huh? Working at the factory? No! This is a normal route to promotion! It's what I need to do! That's just an excuse, right? I thought you were good at your job. I'm disappointed in you. What do you mean, let you down? What do you take working at the factory for? Working at the factory is for people who are at the bottom of the pyramid. Don't talk like that! It's the work site that's important! <sighs> it's a shame that my husband works in a factory. I said... Ugh. It's no use talking to her. After that, Risa continued to blatantly look down on me. She's always been a woman who speaks frankly and openly. But now that I think about it, I feel like she's been looking down on me ever since we first met! And even my mother-in-law! Oh my, Takeru! <laughs> mother-in-law, you're here! <laughs> I heard. You're working at a factory. Oh, Risa told you? Yes, I'll be transferred to the factory soon. Did you screw up at work? Huh? No, it's not like that. It's to get some experience in the site. <laughs> okay, okay. You don't have to put up a front. But more importantly, I can use the company discount even if you work at the factory, right? What? Well, of course you can, but... Oh, thank goodness. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to use the company discount. Huh? If the daughter's like that, this is what the mother is like. Seriously, I might have gotten married too soon. I was already thinking of divorce. Even though we got married without a wedding, 
I was not comfortable with the idea of getting divorced twice. I don't know what to do. One day, when I was worrying about it like that, I needed a certificate of residence because of something that had to do with my parents' real estate. So I went to the city office. I was astonished when I saw the certificate of residence I received there. What? Does this mean? At first I thought it was some kind of mistake and asked the staff, but they said there was no mistake. Which means... That's the only possibility. Anyway, I took the certificate of residence to my parents' house. I hadn't seen my parents in a while, but I showed them my certificate of residence without even saying a greeting. What do you think about this situation? Isn't this some kind of mistake? This is... What's going on? I talked to the authorities, and they said they're sure. And I have some ideas of what might be happening. Ideas? I told my parents about how Risa and my mother-in-law treat me, and how my life is now. Only knowing about Risa before we got married, they didn't believe my story at first. But my credit card history and my serious attitude eventually convinced them. Then I was referred to a lawyer who was an acquaintance of my father's. And under the lawyer's direction, we prepared a voice recorder and gathered evidence. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to hold the things I needed to prove my case, but the evidence came together surprisingly easily. Now it's all good. I'm done with those guys. After gathering enough evidence, I planned to move out on my own. I started to get rid of some of my stuff and move it out little by little so I wouldn't get caught. I prepared an excuse because I thought it was obvious that my stuff was disappearing, but I didn't have to. Risa didn't even notice that most of my stuff was gone. Either that, or she didn't say anything, even if she noticed. You don't care about me at all. And then, when I finished moving my things to the new house, I left the house alone without saying anything to Risa. The next day was also a weekend, so I didn't answer my phone for the whole day on purpose. And on the next day, I got countless calls from Risa. I guess I'll answer it. Hey, where are you right now? She seems pretty upset. Of course she would be. I'd never left the house for a day before. I'm already in my new house. It's pretty comfortable. Huh? Enough with the jokes. Just hurry up and come home. It's not a joke. Besides, I'm not going back there. Huh? You're not mad that I made fun of you, are you? Oh, you were aware of that? Are you sulking just because someone made fun of you a little bit? Are you a child? I'll forgive you, so just come home. Why do I have to go home? What do you mean? Because we're family? Families live together and husbands bring money into the house. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're not even married. What? How can you say we're not married? I don't know why you're arguing with me. I saw the certificate of residence. What? That's right. Risa and I were never married. That's why I was so surprised when I saw the certificate of residence at the city office. Risa's name wasn't listed in the column for family members. I had actually left all the formalities such as submitting the marriage certificate to Risa. Since Risa had hold of the marriage certificate, I didn't have a chance to notice since we've only been married for a short time. And there's a reason why I didn't question Risa until today. Is this a marriage scam? I was very upset when I found out the truth for the first time. Thinking about it now, the change in attitude and the rough use of money after the marriage was obviously strange. I can't believe that even my mother-in-law was trying to eat up all my money. I think it was all planned. I was furious and immediately tried to question Risa, but wait, even if I ask Risa about it now, she might just brush it off, which could be the end of it, which is why I was preparing to sue her by consulting with a lawyer without telling Risa. Wait, there's a reason for this. I don't need excuses. Also, the contract for that house expires at the end of this month because I told the housing company. Also, I'm going to charge you alimony for this. What? Wait a minute! Contact me through my lawyer. I have nothing more to say to you. Well then. Wait. Then Risa and a stranger who I thought was my mother-in-law contacted me several times, but I ignored all of them. It started to get out of hand, so I decided to block their calls unless it was necessary for formal procedures. Surprisingly, things went smoothly from there. 
Risa and her family were verbally abusive to me through their lawyer, but it didn't reach me. Living alone for the first time in a while was incredibly comfortable, and the stress from Risa and her mother was gone, making even the most ordinary days seem enjoyable. A few months later, I got a call from an unknown number. Hmm? Who could it be? I wasn't sure if I should answer it or not, but I decided to take it. And then... You! You're the one who cheated Risa! Cheated Risa? Who are you? I'm Risa's husband! I've heard everything! I don't know, but this sounds interesting. I was excited inside, but I pretended to be flustered and decided to listen. Risa's husband? Wait, I don't really understand. I already know that you cheated Risa and took her money! Huh? The man claiming to be Risa's husband continued to question me on the phone after that, and we decided to meet up to discuss the matter. The next day, while waiting at a coffee shop for the meeting, the man came in. It was you! The man who cheated Risa! Hello, my name is Kawano. Nice to meet you. I'm Keisuke Shimada, Risa's husband. I didn't think you'd ask me to meet you. <laughs> well, hearing your story, I realized that you may have a lot of misunderstandings. So I've come here today to explain. Misunderstanding? How can that be? I've heard everything from Risa! Don't raise your voice so much. I have some questions I want to ask you too. So let's calm down and discuss them. Saying that, I told him the whole story about Risa's fake marriage, including the alimony. I knew he wouldn't believe me based on the story alone, so I prepared the evidence in advance. Shimada-san didn't believe me at first, but when I showed him the evidence, he turned pale as he felt he had no choice but to believe me. No way! Risa did that? I'm sorry. It seems I took Risa's story at face value and made a terrible mistake. It's okay. Is it true that you've been married for several years? Yes, that's true. Actually, I... Shimada-san is currently a fisherman. Since he's a fisherman and can't come home for a few months, he didn't have much contact with Risa during that time. He told me that Risa has debt from a relative and their life is difficult. I guess that's why Risa tried to take money from me. Well, not like I care about the reason. When he finally came home from work, Risa cried and told him, A man named Kawano swindled me out of my money! He couldn't take it, so he contacted me. Why should she tell such an obvious lie again? I accused you without knowing anything. What a shame. So what are you and Risa going to do now? To be honest, I don't trust Risa anymore. But I'll talk it over with her. I see. This is just another chance of fate. So call me if you need anything. I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you. After that, Shimada-san talked it over with Risa. But in conclusion, they decided to get a divorce. Apparently, Risa seemed to really like Shimada-san, and she resisted until the end. So it was quite difficult for him to get a divorce. Shimada-san wondered, if she loves me so much, why did she lie like that? And I think so too. In the end, Risa was also charged alimony by Shimada-san, and it seems that both parent and child are living a hard life. That's karma. No room for pity. Since then, Shimada-san and I have become good drinking buddies. He calls me every few months when he comes home, and tells me interesting stories from the ship when we're drinking. And so, I'm still a single aristocrat. I sometimes feel lonely, but I've learned my lesson about marriage. <laughs>